revered father. I go now to fulfill my mission and my destiny. I hope it is a destiny that will bring honor to our family. And if it requires my life, I will sacrifice it gladly to be a good servant of our nation. That's too big to be planes, right? Is that what you want to do? Night to night fine? Boom! Wrong move. Lieutenant, radar's picking up a large return, moving in from the northeast. Hang on. Relax! It's flight of B-17s coming in from the mainland. Nothing to worry about. A heck of a lot of B-17s. Shot, hot. This better be good, Commander. One of our destroyers reports having fired and sunk enemy submarine attempting to enter Pearl Harbor at 0653. 720. We had decoder delays, Admiral. Really, this to Washington recall of staff. Failure. Peace talks. Useless. Thurman here. Tokyo transmitting to their embassy in Washington. Discontinue use of your decoding machine and dispose of immediately. Special emphasis on destroying important parts. Do you read that? Acknowledge. Admiral, Naval Intel intercepted a transmission from Tokyo to the Japanese embassy in Washington, instructing them to break apart all decoder machines and burn all secret documents. Japanese are expecting a war. Should we? Commentator is Joe O'Brien. Here is the motion picture record released by the United States Navy of the havoc wrought by the Japs' sneak sky and sea raid on Pearl Harbor, America's mid-Pacific naval bastion. Here is a tragic, unforgettable page in the annals of America. Here, the cunning deceit of the Japs will never be forgotten. Here, they hoped to score a knockout before the war began. The Arizona's gun crews, battered and broken, fired to the last. Their guns pointed skyward from whence the enemy appeared. The Japs' sneak blow cost hundreds of military and civilian lives. The treacherous attack cost our Pacific fleet two battleships outright, another capsized, the loss of three destroyers and a mine lane. While bombs were still bursting and flames still pouring from our shattered naval craft, a light United States cruiser valiantly moves out to join the fleet and avenge Pearl Harbor. 
The attack on Pearl Harbor was a surprise military strike conducted by the Imperial Japanese Navy against the United States Naval Base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii on the morning of December 7, 1941. The base was attacked by 353 Japanese fighters, bombers, and torpedo planes in two waves launched from six aircraft carriers. All eight U.S. Navy battleships were damaged with four being sunk. The Japanese also sank or damaged three cruisers, three destroyers, an anti-aircraft training ship, and one mine layer. 188 U.S. aircraft were destroyed, 2,402 Americans were killed, and 1,282 were wounded. The attack came as a profound shock to the American people and led directly into the American entry into World War II. The following day, the United States declared war on Japan. If I go first, I'll wait for you there. On the other side of the dark waters, why should I be afraid to die? I belong to you. We're going straight up that hill there. How many men do you think it's worth? How many lives? There's nowhere we can hide except in each other. Thing you can do, nobody can touch me for it. Make no difference who you are. No matter how much training you got, how tough a guy you might be, you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time, you're gonna get it. I want you to attack right now with every man at your disposal. I've lived with these men, sir, for two and a half years, and I will not order them all to their deaths. <laughs> We all men got one big soul everybody's a part of. All faces of the same man. What's your name? What difference do you think you can make one single man in all this madness? You're just too soft-hearted. You're not tough-fibered enough. Have you ever had anyone die in your arms, sir? Who lit this flame in us? Because I have you, nothing can touch me. No hurt, no grief, not even death. On August 7, 1942, Allied forces landed on the island of Guadalcanal in the southern Solomon Islands with the objective of denying their use by the Japanese to threaten the supply and communication routes between the U.S., Australia, and New Zealand. Surprised by the Allied offensive, the Japanese had made several attempts between August and November of 1942 to retake Henderson Field, the most important airfield on Guadalcanal. The Guadalcanal campaign was a significant tactical victory by the Allied forces over the Japanese in the Pacific Theater. The Japanese had reached the climax of their conquest in the Pacific, and the Guadalcanal marked the transition by the Allies from defensive operations to the strategic offensive in that theater, and it was also the beginning of the offensive operations that resulted in Japan's eventual surrender and the end of World War II in the Pacific. On June 3, 1942, USS Enterprise sails 900 miles from her home base in Hawaii, accompanied by fellow carriers Yorktown and Hornet. She is heading for a tiny American outpost on a remote atoll called Midway. 175 miles west, four Japanese carriers steam southeastward on a collision course. Imperial Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto plans to finish the job he started at Pearl Harbor. Nimitz knows that the Japanese will approach Midway from the northwest, so he sends his aircraft carriers, Enterprise, Hornet, and Yorktown, to a staging point 200 miles northeast of the island. When the Japanese carriers come within range, American bombers will attack. 
and all signs point to the 4th of June as the day the enemy ships will reach the battle zone. Admiral Yamamoto's plan to trap the American carriers has backfired spectacularly. In a single battle, four Japanese carriers are sunk. One cruiser is scuttled, 228 Japanese aircraft destroyed, and 3,000 Japanese sailors and crewmen are killed. Although the American losses include one destroyer and the carrier Yorktown, it is the most surprising victory in the annals of U.S. naval warfare. Yamamoto is forced to call off the attempted invasion of Midway. The epic naval clash off Midway Island changed the face of the Pacific War. It proved that America could not only fight back, it could win. The Japanese Navy has faced tremendous loss. They sent their finest fighters and failed. Hundreds, hundreds of them were their super, very, very best pilots, and they never recovered. The Japanese don't possess the capability of replacing those assets, whereas the sleeping giant sitting back in North America was just getting started. Admiral Yamamoto and the Japanese high command are shaken. They have awoken the giant and felt its wrath. The Battle of Midway in the Pacific Theater was one of the most important naval battles of World War II. Fought between the 4th and 7th of June in 1942, it was only six months after Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. The Japanese operation, like the earlier attack on Pearl Harbor, sought to eliminate the United States as a strategic power in the Pacific, thereby giving Japan a free hand in establishing its empire. The Japanese hoped that another demoralizing defeat would force the U.S. to surrender in the Pacific War and thus ensure Japanese dominance in the Pacific. However, American codebreakers were able to determine the date and location of the attack, enabling the cautioned U.S. Navy to set up an ambush of its own. Four Japanese aircraft carriers and a heavy cruiser were sunk at a cost of only one American aircraft carrier and one destroyer. It was Japan's first naval defeat in almost 80 years.
Before the Battle of Saipan, the Allies had captured the Solomon Islands, the Gilbert Islands, the Marshall Islands, and New Guinea. This left the Japanese holding the Philippines, the Carolina Islands, Peleliu Islands, and Marina Islands. The battle in Saipan was hopeless for the defenders, but the Japanese were determined to fight to the last man. The Japanese used the many caves in the volcanic landscape to delay the attackers by hiding during the day and making raids at night. The Americans gradually developed tactics for clearing the caves by using flamethrower teams supported by artillery and machine guns. By the 7th of July, the Japanese had nowhere to retreat. Saito made plans for a final suicidal bonsai charge. In the end, almost the entire garrison of troops on the island, at least 30,000 died. For the Americans, the victory was the most costly to date in the Pacific War. 2,949 Americans were killed and 10,464 were wounded out of the 71,000 who had landed. You get it? I don't know. I wish I could have seen their faces. The right picture can win or lose a war. You're gonna want to see this. Now, this picture. People went crazy over it. The country was tired of war. One photo, almost all on its own, turned that around. Any theories why they ain't shooting? Maybe they're all dead. What do you think, Doc? You think they're all dead? Severance asked me who else is in that picture. You tell them it was me? No. Then pick someone dead. They don't want somebody dead. They want to ship us back to the States. Here are the heroes of Iwo Jima. Everybody wants to meet you guys. Just some simple things we want you to say. Mostly, buy bonds. You know, I think this whole damn thing is a farce. If we don't raise $14 billion, this war's over by the end of the month. As far as us being the heroes of Iwo Jima, ooh, ooh, that's just ooh. not the case. The real heroes are dead on that island. Knowing he was with you that day and seeing him in that photograph, I don't know why it makes me feel better, but it does. It's so silly. No, it's not. I can't take them calling me a hero. Some of the things I saw it done, they weren't things to be proud of. The Battle of Iwo Jima was a major battle in which the United States Armed Forces fought for and captured the island of Iwo Jima from the Japanese Empire. 
The Imperial Japanese Army positions on the island were heavily fortified, with a dense network of bunkers, hidden artillery positions, and 11 miles of underground tunnels. The Americans on the ground were supported by extensive naval artillery and complete air supremacy. Despite the bloody fighting and severe casualties on both sides, the Japanese defeat was assured from the start. Overwhelming American superiority in arms and numbers, as well as complete control of air power, with the impossibility of Japanese retreat or reinforcement, guaranteed no possible circumstance in which the Americans could have lost the battle. The battle was symbolized by the famous photograph of the raising of the U.S. flag on top of Mount Suribachi by five U.S. Marines and one U.S. Navy corpsman. The photograph promptly became an unforgettable icon of that battle, of that war in the Pacific, and of the Marine Corps itself, and it has been widely reproduced ever since. Battleship Missouri, 53,000 ton flagship of Admiral Halsey's Third Fleet, becomes the scene of an unforgettable ceremony marking the complete and formal surrender of Japan. In the Bay of Tokyo itself, the United States destroyer Buchanan comes alongside, bringing representatives of the Allied powers to witness the final capitulation. General of the Army Douglas MacArthur, Supreme Allied Commander for the occupation of Japan, boards the Missouri. Fleet Admiral Nimitz, Pacific Fleet Commander, and Admiral Halsey welcome MacArthur and his Chief of Staff, General Sutherland, aboard. Admiral Nimitz escorts General MacArthur to the Missouri's veranda deck, where the 20-minute ceremony is to take place. It is Sunday, September 2nd, 1945. and reporters of many countries record this historic moment as United Nations military leaders crowd aboard the Missouri and examine souvenir cards bearing the Japanese flag, special mementos of the occasion. And now, in a Navy launch, the Japanese surrender party arrives. They are headed by Agent Mamoru Shigemitsu, foreign minister of the Japanese surrender cabinet, who was wounded by a Korean patriot in Shanghai years ago and walks on an artificial lake. The Japanese delegation lines up on the opposite side of the surrender table from the Allies. A war which had entered its eighth terrible year in China, which had raged for three years and nine months for America and Britain, which was the brutal, costly eastern half of the most horrible worldwide war in human history, is now within minutes of ending for good. Swarms of United States aircraft fly in formation overhead as the ceremony ends. The final United Nations victory has been won. The war is over. Peace is here.